Hello everyone, it's Melinda and today we're going to be looking at Lepidolite and Fuchsite or Fuchsite. Um, before I get into the specifics of these beautiful, beautiful minerals, I want to make it, you know, abundantly clear that these are all uh, mica minerals. Lepidolite, Fuchsite, um, Biotite, Phlogopite, uh, Muscovite, <laughs> these are all mica minerals. Um, I think it's really important to know that. Just, um, I don't know, you get to really uh, understand how uh, common mica is and, you know, maybe just have a different sense of appreciation for it. Um, However, even though mica is an extremely abundant mineral worldwide, these ones are a little bit special, and so we'll get into why. So first I'm going to start with lepidolite, and I'll show you my specimen that I purchased in the UK. Very beautiful, typical type of specimen. There we go. Hopefully you can see that beautiful color. So, lepidolite is a lilac gray or rose colored member of the mica group of minerals. So, the color is um, the major, one of the <laughs> major identifiers of lepidolite versus regular muscovite or mica. Um, <clears throat> so, again, lepidolite um, is the most abundant lithium bearing mineral and a secondary source of the metal. <clears throat> it is a phyllosilicate mineral, just like the other uh, members of the mica group. Um, lepidolite is found naturally in a variety of colors, however, mainly pink, purple, and red, also gray, and very rarely yellow and colorless. And I can already hear the cogs in my own head as I'm doing this research starting to turn, thinking, how could it be yellow or colorless? Um, isn't it that lilac, purple, pinky color that makes it lepidolite? Absolutely, as it turns out, not. Uh, lepidolite is a lithium-bearing mica, so it is the fact that it bears lithium that makes it lepidolite. Um, it is often wrongly assumed that the lithium is what causes the pink and purple hues. Um, however, it is, it's not. It's absolutely not. It is actually uh, trace amounts of manganese, manganese, sorry, uh, that cause the pink, purple, and red colors in these lepidolite specimens. So to be considered lepidolite, it doesn't necessarily have to be this lilac color, um, but it does absolutely have to be a lithium bearing mica, and that is what makes it uh, quite rare. It occurs in granite pegmatites uh, and in some high temperature quartz veins and granites. Um, its associated minerals include quartz, feldspar, spodamine, ambliganite, tourmaline, columbite, cassiterite, topaz, and beryl. And notable occurrences of this gorgeous type of mica uh, include Brazil, Russia, the United States, Manitoba right here in Canada, and Madagascar. So yeah, I found that totally fascinating to, uh, you know, find out that it was the lithium that made it, that allows it to be categorized as lepidolite rather than the color alone. And also surprising that the color is not caused by lithium, but rather uh, manganese. It's really neat. Now, this specimen blows me away. I absolutely love, love, love it. It's muscovite mica in lepidolite mica. And they're the same crystal. They're the same, um, you know, it's one growth. However, you can see the different uh, types of elemental inclusions in the mica that changed at a certain time. So in the center here, we have a very uh, translucent, it's tough because it's so reflective that my iPad doesn't quite want to show it off <laughs> as it should be, but you can see my fingers right through that clearer 
muscovite mica in the center here. And then on the outer layers, we can see that very typical, oops, oh no, I'm losing sheets. I don't like that at all. Uh, that very typical lilac purpley color of the lepidolite. And, and that just means that at some point, uh, the elements making up this mineral changed. Um, at one point, it was bearing lithium and, and manganese. And at another point, you know, it's not. There may be lithium in there, as we've learned. Uh, there are instances of clear lepidolite, lithium-bearing mica, um, but it was labeled as muscovite, so I'm assuming similar pieces have been, you know, studied and found that that chemical change occurred at some point in its growth. It's really, really, really cool. It's starting to fall apart, so I'm going to gently turn it over. You can see the the pages <clears throat> that we call the different sheets and a nice stack like this um, is fractured crystal um, but we consider it or call it rather a book a mica book yeah so <clears throat> again even though lepidolite is a member of the mica family and mica is one of the most abundant minerals uh, worldwide it is more costly and uh, you're much less likely to see it on the market um, because it is far more rare than your average Joe mica or muscovite. <laughs> really cool. Oh, and I forgot to mention this specimen is from Minas Gerais, Brazil, where they have so many amazing minerals. <laughs> it is mind-blowing how much, how many of my specimens come out of there. Um, all right, next up we're going to be looking at fuchsite, commonly called fuchsite, uh, but was originally uh, meant to be pronounced bauxite, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So this is, uh, you know, something that I purchased at like a metaphysical shop, um, and it's certainly something that you can find in those <laughs> types of settings. Um, and it will flake away because again it is mica so don't be alarmed if you see like little sparkles around. That's very normal. Utterly, utterly gorgeous. Yeah, so what makes it special? Let's get into it. So <clears throat> fuchsite is also known as chrome mica. Uh, it is a chromium-rich variety of the mineral muscovite belonging to the mica group of phyllosilicate minerals. So, like I said, very much a mica mineral. Um, it's just that it has chromium in it. Uh, so, trivalent chromium replaces one of the aluminum atoms in the general muscovite formula, producing the apple green hue distinctive of fuchsite or fuchsite. Um, <clears throat> it is often found in minute micaceous uh, aggregates with individual plates barely visible as a major component of chromium rich phyllite or schist metamorph metamorphic rocks. So what that means is um, <clears throat> it is not common to see green mica like these back here in big beautiful flake sheets. That is not common at all. It is much more typical in this form, um, which would be phyllite, because the little individual plates of mica is, you know, so, 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 so small that you can't really make them out, uh, you know, with the naked eye. It just kind of looks like a landscape of, of uh, I don't know, compacted sparkles, I suppose, and really that is what it is, <laughs> Mother Earth's natural sparkles. Um, yeah, so this would be considered more of a phyllite. This one, however, uh, was hounded in Ontario. I don't know the specific spot, and it's not quite as green. This one would be considered more of a mica schist. So whereas this one is a phyllite, this one is a schist because we can quite clearly see those flakes, right? We can absolutely see them. They're not 
so smashed up that it's just one plane. You can absolutely see little plates of sparkles. I could chip them off, flake them off easily. So this would be more of a schist. And <clears throat> when I first started learning, I was under the impression that uh, these green mica schists could not be uh, considered fuchsite or fuchsite unless they were in the phyllite form, the very, very finely grained form like that one. Uh, but according to my research, that is not true. So I am not 100% sure uh, that this muscovite contains chromium. It is absolutely green and something is causing it to be green. Um, <clears throat> if it is chromium, if there's chromium present in the, you know, chemical makeup of the specimen, then this would absolutely be considered uh, a, a fuchsite or fuchsite. <clears throat> so why do I keep pronouncing it these two different ways? Let's get into the history. So <clears throat> it is absolutely more typically pronounced fuchsite with a long U and a long I. However, the mineral is named after Johann uh, Nep Nepomuk von Fuchs, a German chemist and mineralogist, and his name is pronounced, like I keep saying, Fuchs, uh, similar to the way that you pronounce books or looks. So technically speaking, it's supposed to be pronounced uh, Fuchsite. However, like I keep saying, <laughs> typically it is pronounced Fuchsite, and I think people would understand you. Um, you know, if you said it that way, regardless of the, you know, history of the word. Um, so the common color of this mineral is pale green to emer emerald green, uh, depending on the amount of chromium uh, substitution. And again, the, the chromium was substituting uh, for the aluminum atoms. Um, so this one, like I said, is a little bit darker than this one, you know. Uh, I'm not, again, 100% sure that chromium is present in this one, but certainly if it is, this one would be uh, much at a much higher, I guess, saturation. Um, <clears throat> and then a very common thing that we see in the market, uh, particularly in little tumble stones like this, is ruby in fuchsite or fuchsite. There we go. My iPad can see this one nicely. Thank goodness. <laughs> So literally what you're seeing here are little round rubies. Um, well, they're not round, but they do appear round when they are, you know, tumbled and shaped in this way. Um, but yeah, little ruby crystals inside of green fuchsite or fuchsite, like this type of material here. Um, this one looks like uh, the grains of mica are very, 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 very finely uh, compacted. Um, and then we have these white circles around uh, and blue right, 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 right around the ruby. And uh, from what I can tell, again, I speak about this in my video about kyanite as well as my video about corundum that contains rubies because rubies are corundum, um, that these circles indicate uh, kyanite in the system here around the ruby and someone even suggested that that might be because silica is uh, coming into the mix and actually altering the ruby into kyanite. I'm not sure if that is um, factual but that's what uh, you know the discussion was talking about on the Mindat forum or Mindat. I find that super cool. Let me know if you agree with that science. <laughs> And then lastly, we have this specimen of red fuchsite or fuchsite. And I put those little quotation marks around fuchsite and fuchsite because, as we've just learned, um, that name is reserved for chromium bearing uh, mica schists or phyllites. And this cannot possibly be a chromium uh, bearing mica because it is not green and the green color is very much an indication of that uh, element being present. So um, it was sold as fuchsite at a metaphysical shop um, but clearly this is being you know this is a mislabeling um, and all you know it's just unfortunate because a lot of metaphysical shops will 
uh, get like a general sense of a word and then apply it to things to sell more. But unfortunately, um, you know, that just leads to miseducation. I'm not a fan of that. Um, <clears throat> so again, uh, the name is reserved for green chromium micas, not red. Uh, but this is still a very beautiful red mica, kind of verging on phyllite form, I would say. I can sort of see little sparkles, so it's kind of, I guess, in between a schist and a phyllite. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I'm still happy to have it. And from what I can tell in my research, it is, well, it possibly comes from uh, the Brazilian mountains. Um, and it would typically be used in this really gorgeous uh, kind of metallic shining watercolor paint. Apparently that is what it's famous for. So, um, you know, as an artist, I still find that super fascinating and I'm, I'm very happy to have this piece. I just wish, uh, I wish those labeling and selling these specimens would be a little bit more educated. I'm sure there are many, many who are, th you know, thoroughly educated, but unfortunately that's not the case for everyone. Um, yeah, but here I am trying my best to, <laughs> you know, to get to the bottom of things. <laughs> so I absolutely love that. I find it so fun. Um, yeah, so there you have it, guys. Again, they're all um, in the mica family. They're definitely all micas, but they have, um, you know, elemental uh, inclusions inside of them or replacements of other minerals in, the, in their chemistry uh, that makes them not only a unique color, but you know, gives them that kind of unique classification. So there you have it. Lepidolite and fuchsite or fuchsite, <laughs> depending on what you prefer. Um, yeah, that was so much fun, guys. I hope you enjoyed it too. I'll see you next time. Bye.